My special guest on today's Hard Talk is an official visitor to London, President Yoweri Museveni of Uganda. Since he led a rebel army into Kampala in 1986, he's delivered relative stability and economic progress to a country which had been brutalized by dictatorship. But now he faces real questions about his commitment to genuine democracy and human rights. When he took power, he said that Africa's biggest problem was leaders who overstayed their welcome. Is he now in danger of falling into that very same trap? President Yoweri Museveni, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Many years ago, you wrote a book called What is Africa's Problem? And your conclusion seemed to be that one of the biggest problems was leaders who overstay their welcome, who stay in power too long. Well, here you sit after a quarter of a century in power. Have you forgotten your own words? I've not forgotten my words. What I meant was people stay long in power without being elected. And uh, the quarter uh, century you're talking about, I've been in government, I've been elected all the time. The, That's true, you have been elected. Some people would dispute whether some of those elections were truly free. But leaving that aside, you, back in 1995, supported a constitution which imposed term limits on the president. And then, Years later, you decided you didn't believe in term limits anymore. Why was that? I, I think term limits is not really the crux of the matter. What is the crux of the matter is the ability of the people to elect or otherwise. I, I think we are leaving uh, the core issues and going for the peripheral issues, the forms rather than the substance. We'll get to the substance, but just one other thought on leaders in Africa who have stayed in power for an awful long time. Just off the top of my head, only you're in the top five now, but the list includes Mugabe in Zimbabwe, it includes Obiang in Equatorial Guinea, it includes uh, Bia in Cameroon. I just wonder whether this is company that you are proud to keep. I keep the company of elected leaders. This is the company I keep. Elected through competitive elections from the beginning. So uh, that is the, the, the issue. But more important, you should ask the question of what does Africa need? Is it the just change of leaders or is it programs? The way forward in terms of social economic transformation. You, you really pose the, the issues wrongly. The issue what, that has crippled Africa has been which way to go which formula to use. So the problem of Africa is not who, but what. Well, let's get to the what. Let's try to define what uh, the Museveni strategy for Uganda has really amounted to. And let, let's start with politics, and let's start with notions of pluralism, democracy, multi-party democracy, and the right to dissent. If we look at what has happened in the last year in your country, and thinking particularly of your security forces' reaction to popular protests last year, in April of last year, um, it doesn't look as though you really do like dissent. Not at all. I have no problem with the dissent. And we had no problem with the popular manifestations. The only contention was, when you engage in a, a manifestation or a demonstration, you should respect the right of others. Kampala is still a crowded city. The infrastructure, uh, the roads are still narrow. Our argument with those groups was that if you want to demonstrate, agree with the police where to demonstrate and uh, wh which routes to follow. That's all. Well, uh, you say that's all, but these walk to work protests ended with your security forces killing nine people, including a child, including two people shot in the back, including two people shot inside buildings. That doesn't sound like 
the workings of a real democracy. The, those who killed people, like the one who killed a, a child, he has been arrested and he has, he's, he's being tried. Those are indisciplined people who uh, abuse uh, the, their uh, authority and he's facing charges that particular, those particular people. There were, could, could be some accidental uh, uh, deaths which were not easy to pin down. Would you um, accept that it might be useful, given the, the very high temperature we see in Ugandan politics today, and we've talked a bit about the, the violence that's been on the streets, would it be useful, do you think, for you to indicate that you do not intend to run again in 2016? That is for, the, for the, uh, my party to, to work on, not for television programs. But no, but, it, it, it's but, also but, for you to declare what your intentions are. Do you want to run again in 2016? I always work with my party. It is my party which will decide what, what we should do. Of course, w with my input, but I, I don't come here on television to decide my party programs, my party, uh, to take party decisions on how to talk. Well, uh, if you do want to, we'd be delighted to hear them. But if you don't want to, let's move on because... When, 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 we, when we decide to, uh, what to do, I will come back and... Uh, <laughs> well, we look forward to that, Mr. And, President. And use your services. But you've made it clear that you believe, you know, the party makes key decisions. Mm. I would put it to you that your own party, the NRM, is increasingly unhappy with some of the things that are happening inside your own country, not least what's happening with the oil business and oil contracts. There is one key company, Western company, Tullo Oil, that has been in negotiation with your government for a long time about exploring major tracts of, of potential um, oil in the Lake Albert region. Now, the parliament demanded suspension of the signing of any contracts until new laws had been passed to regulate the oil business in your country. You overrode the parliament and signed the deal with Tullo anyway. Why did you do that? The, I, we have no problem with the resolutions of parliament. They passed 10 resolutions. The government accepted eight, but they did not accept two out of the 10. But they were rather crucial because it meant that you could go ahead and sign a deal which the parliament had said should be suspended. The, the first of all, parliament at that time was op operating on, a, uh, on a, uh, uh, forged documents which they presented in parliament, which were forged. Uh, later on when my party met, my MPs of my party, when we met, who were the majority, we decided not to accept uh, that part of the recommendations. But in any case, we have uh, uh, explored for that oil. We have found it. We have now advanced very far. We are, we are now reaching the production stage. What laws were we using? We were using some laws. So do not give the impression that there was an absence of, of, of laws. The law they are talking about is just updating, adding on. Yeah, well, they think it's very important to update the laws because I think many people inside your country as well as outside, they look at the way other African nations have been affected by having huge oil resources. Maybe they look at Nigeria, maybe they look at Equatorial Guinea and Angola as well, and they talk about the curse of oil. In your own parliament, an MP has claimed that uh, senior ministers in your government received kickbacks from Tullo Oil, which of course they reject, they adamantly reject, but this allegation exists of kickbacks being paid to it's senior not only, ministers. It's not only that the minister reject it, I know it because we worked with the police, including the British police here, and the police in Malta, and we found those documents to be to have been uh, forged documents. But you do have a corruption problem, Mr. President. You had two senior ministers resign in the last few days yes. over an allegation of, of uh, payments that were made to a senior member of your political party who's a property developer, $60 million, two ministers signed off on payments. They said you know, knew about these payments as well. I, Did didn't, I, I didn't know about the magnitude of the payments. The issue was not the payments, the issue was the magnitude. Uh, I, I definitely knew about the payments because I am the one who kicked that, uh, kicked that uh, businessman out of the markets. The problem was that he, he was given what people consider to be too much money. 
That's where the contention is. And, and I'll tell you what, it doesn't sit well, does it? In a population which is experiencing 25% inflation, where a quarter of your people are still living below the poverty line, it doesn't look good when this sort a vast sum is swilling around the the political business network in Kampala. Well, it didn't look good, and I'm the one who, who detected that. I'm the one who, who, who started the process of investigation. Uh, I am the one who has accepted the, the resignation of those, of those ministers. And it showed the strength of our system. First of all, the police found out about this problem in time. Secondly, our public account, accounts committee did the investigation, and now we have taken action. That's how health systems work. They work by detecting wrongs and, and correcting them. Let me ask you um, about another aspect of your vision for Uganda, and that, that's your commitment to individual rights as a part of, of human rights. There has been a great focus in the last couple of years in the West on Uganda's treatment of homosexuals. Are you entirely satisfied that homosexuals in your country are having their human rights respected? The issue is mishandled by the Western countries and their, so their uh, activist groups. Homosexuals in small numbers have existed in uh, our part of black Africa. They were never persecuted. They were never... Um, uh, well, it, it, is, it is entirely illegal to be the, homosexual and practice homosexuality in just, your country, isn't just it? Just listen. They were, never, uh, they were never persecuted. They were never discriminated. But uh, the difference between us and the Western societies, they were also not, not promoted. So the problem is on the promotion. The difference between Africa and, 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 and Western Europe is on the promotion of homosexuality, as if it is something good and, and so on and so forth. What happened in our, in our traditional society is that the homosexuals would be known, uh, it would not be approved, but it would be ignored.